the sign of Jonah when he was in the belly of the whale, he didn't die because he was praying in the whale. Do dead people pray? No, they don't. No, they don't. Like I was saying, we believe Prophet Jesus is a mighty prophet of God, like all prophets of God. He's mentioned the Quran many times. The Mother Mary has an entire chapter dedicated to her in the Quran. Right. And we are from the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Unlike other Muslims, like I was telling you, we believe in the event of the crucifixion. Now you ask me, does that mean Jesus died on the cross? We say no. He was put on the cross, but he didn't die. Now you ask me a question, if you can repeat that, your understanding of the Quran. Yeah, so uh, it was my understanding, and I, I think you just corrected me, that the Quran mentioned that it wasn't Jesus who died on the cross, that he, that they were deceived, or Allah turned them over to a deception. Is that what, does it say that? No, so this is a misconception that has been spread, and it's not your fault because Muslims have themselves right. written such things in their commentaries that, you know, the face of Jesus hadith was stuff? not in a hadith. Okay. There is no single hadith of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, which says even something hinting towards what you're saying. Yeah. It's from scholars, but these are based on the Israeliyat. Right. So they're the, like cliches that just Exactly. They're not authentic. Christianity has a few of those around there, exactly. you know? So they're weak statements attributed to people and right. they're found in the books of commentary. But one thing you have to remember is what does the Quran actually say? The Quran says وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا سَلَبُوهُ They did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. And we have some reasons for why we say Jesus wasn't put on the cross, wasn't killed on the cross, why he wasn't put to death on the cross. So I'll give you one reason, okay? Jesus made just one prophecy regarding the crucifixion. What was that prophecy? Well, it depends. It, to my understanding, the scriptures speak uh, many times of Jesus be dying for our sins, one to come, a son to be given, and you know, he was going to pay the price for our sins. So it says it in a few places in the Bible. What prophecy are you speaking about? So there is no such prophecy that you're mentioning from Jesus. Jesus only made one prophecy before the crucifixion, and the prophecy was Isn't that... prophet like Moses? No, no, that's a different prophecy. That's the prophecy of Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. The prophecy we're referring to is the prophecy Jesus made before the crucifixion, and he said, the Jewish people, they were really, you know, hasty with signs. They would come to Jesus, show us a sign, show us a sign. But this isn't how prophethood works. You have to be humble and see what teachings Jesus brought, which were beautiful. the only sign you'll be given is the sign of Jonah, the pro Jonah, right? Exactly. Yeah. So this was the only prophecy regarding the crucifixion. Now, what is the story of Jonah? You're a Christian. They teach this story to literally all the Christians. So what comes to your mind when you hear of the story of Jonah, the miracle of Jonah? Well, the scripture says that Jonah was called by the Lord to go tell Nineveh that God was going to overthrow the city. Jonah didn't want to. Nineveh was a large city, so he probably thought that was uh, not a good idea. He went the opposite way to Tarshish. And then there was a problem on the boat, and Jonah threw himself in the boat, and he died and was swallowed by the whale. Three days later, spit out by the whale. So this is really interesting. That's what firstly, the says. Yeah, firstly, I want to make one clarification. We don't believe this is what happened with Jonah alayhi salam from the Quranic viewpoint. We don't believe he disobeyed God in that sense. We don't believe prophets sin. Unlike the Bible, it actually says that Jesus himself said that many thieves came before me. And it says some things about Lot. Now you mentioned the story of Jonah, but you mentioned something no Christian believes, which is quite shocking yeah, to me. Most, uh, most Christians will believe that he just got swallowed and didn't die, and that he, and that he was spat out and stuff no, like but that. But I respect your honesty. You have to add that into there that he was killed, because if he didn't die, That's then... That's the inference, right? Yeah, the context. Yeah, so the reason you have to say that is because if he didn't die, mm -hmm. then you cannot prove the sign of Jonah for Jesus. That's but right. there's one thing you said, which I'll have to ask you about. You said this is what the scripture says, but there's not a single verse in the Bible which says Jonah died. So why did you add that? Well, because Jonah was a sign of Jesus to come. 
And Jesus died, and then three days later rose again, right? And no, so we, I understand we that, but that. And so the, the, I, the context yeah. of Jonah, um, it's not very likely that he was swallowed by a whale and then you know just just was. No, I totally understand. Down there. Yeah. It, it's more likely that the inference and the context is that he died and then was resurrected three days. No, after. I understand that's your view, and I respect that. Many scholars agree on that too. Yeah, I understand that. I can believe that you know that Ferris wheel is a flying unicorn if Doesn't I want. Mean it's right, exactly. though, right? But yeah. you said, mm. and that's the blessing of social media we're recording. You yeah. said this is what the scripture says. Yes, yeah, but the scripture. This- the, the, the scripture doesn't say that. The context of the scriptures, right? You got to read everything in the right context. Did you guys hear him? Yeah, in the right context. You said the scripture. Yeah. When you look at the sign of Jonah, ask any Christian, right. right? The sign of Jonah when he was in the belly of the whale, he didn't die because he was praying in the whale. Do dead people pray? No, they don't. No, they don't. And the inference is is that he was in the whale and that he died. It doesn't say he died, but when it when we speak of Jesus coming, who died in three days, rose again, I know you guys disagree with that, but Christians do not. We agree that he died and rose again three days after. And so Jonah was a type and shadow of Jesus to come, who would die and three days later be yeah, resurrected. So this is this is where Muslims, we this is say... What I, this is what I and myself and others believe, the context of what the story of Jonah is giving. Yeah. So we respect your view, but with all humility, we will go with what Jesus' own words are. And the words of Jesus were that this adulterous generation demands a sign, and they will be given no sign except the sign of Jonah. Now, what is the miracle of Jonah? If I was thrown overboard, I would have died. If I was in the belly of the fish, I would have died. If I came out alive, I would have been dead. I would have been long gone. The miracle was that God protected him when he was thrown overboard he was alive in the belly of the fish he was praying he was still alive he came out he was still alive so this is the miracle your spirit can pray after you die i'm sure there will be many people in hell praying but god will not hear their prayers this is the thing you mentioned spirit right and when jesus after the crucifixion so as muslims we believe this was the miracle of jonah and it was fulfilled with jesus because he survived like it says in hebrews 5 7 that in the days of his flesh he prayed that god saves him from death and the god heard his prayer well it didn't say that god saved him from death it says that he was not left to corruption meaning that when he died he wasn't left there that he ascended also and resurrected so because you guys don't believe that Jesus died, it would make sense that you guys would lean on the fact that Jonah also didn't die. No, we do believe Jesus died. We don't on believe cross, he died. Though, on I'm the saying, cross, yeah, yeah, that's the, thing, the right? Now, one thing is, firstly, the miracle of Jonah. I explained that to you. The second thing is in Deuteronomy, and the verse I quoted. That's not the verse here quoting. Hebrews 5, 7 says, In the days he prayed to his Lord to save him from death, and the Lord heard his prayers. Not only this, we believe Jesus was a mighty prophet of God. We don't believe that God would deny his prayer. He prayed that, Oh God, save me, right? Before the crucifixion. Save me. Ila, Ila, Lima, Sabakhtani. What does that mean? Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me, yeah. not saved me? And then there's, a, there's, right? another, there's another verse as well. He says that if you, something around, let this cup pass from me. Well, he's praying in the garden and he's saying, yeah. Father, he says, um, let this cup pass, but nevertheless, let your will be done. And, yeah. and it was the Father's will that he would be punished for our iniquities on the cross. So yeah. let me ask you this. When you stand before God yeah. and God judges you on your sin, and and if does the Quran teach that Allah, if you're in sin and you have sin, that He condemns you to hell? Is that what the no Quran no? Says? It doesn't say that. Firstly, secondly, look, you mentioned dying for sins. Look, Jesus said, "I have not come to change a single dot of the Old Testament." Right, right. He okay, didn't. so the Old Testament is clear that everyone dies for their own sins. No one shall be put to death for another man's sins. Number one. Number two, the Old Testament makes it clear that anyone who dies on the cross is accursed. The Arabic word is mal'un, and even in Hebrew, one accursed means one far from God. Yeah, that's now you why, mentioned that's why the scripture says he became a curse for us. Who said this first? Do you know? The scripture says this. We as Christians believe that all of the word is inspired by God and breathed by God, profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness. Yeah, no, I asked you who was the first to say his death on the cross was a curse for the law. 
I know Isaiah speaks of it very clearly. Well, Isaiah, but you know Isaiah doesn't. It was Paul in Galatians. Yeah, right. Okay. I'm, you asked first. Yeah. I'm saying that Isaiah prophesied that Jesus would come and die for our iniquities. No, so Isaiah 53 doesn't say that. It says the Lord. All through Isaiah, so, it speaks of it. Yeah, so Isaiah actually prophesies that he prays and the Lord shall lengthen his days, number one. Number two, we can find any Jewish person in the world today, okay, mm -hmm. anyone, and right. we can ask him that, look, you read the Old Testament, mm -hmm. you've mastered the Old Testament, the Jewish scholars, do you find the concept of Trinity or that a person will come in the flesh of God and he will die for your sins? They don't believe this. Well, if I may, and this might shock you, but yeah. I don't believe in a Trinity. Okay, so that's I believe good. that there is one God, which yeah. there's a lot of the Christianity today is, which came from Tertullian in the second century in yeah, the Catholic exactly. Church, and they brought in this Trinity thing, which makes it really hard because I know a lot of Muslims when they hear that you're like, come on, that's silly. No, we've you met, guys know we've Trinity met, is silly, right? We do know it's silly, but we've yeah. met Christians who are Unitarians as right, well. Right. But we've also met Christians who don't believe Jesus is God in any sense. Yes, He's yeah. a son of God. I would say the they're not true Christians. Um, because the scripture says that, you know, that God revealed himself in the flesh, that God was pleased that the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in Christ bodily, so that he was the express image of the invisible God. Because if Allah wanted to show us something, he has to show us in how we can see. He is spirit, God is spirit, and there is one God. And if he wants to show us something, he has to reveal it to us through a way that we can understand, see, and that's what Jesus, that's what who Jesus was. Yeah, so God revealed himself in the flesh so we could behold yeah. his good character and his goodness. And in that grace and truth that Jesus brought, he died on the cross so that all of our sins could be forgiven. Because in the Old Testament, and, and you guys know this because we have the same Torah, right? That there was, there needed to be the shedding of the blood of the lamb. Uh, the prophet yeah, Moses yeah. brought that in that there must be the shedding of the blood of the lamb to atone for so, sin. So that's different. We sacrifice goats as well to attain, right, right. you know, blessings. So why do you Allah. sacrifice those goats? Let me just explain one thing. You mentioned that you believe Jesus is God, right? Uh, in the flesh, yes. Yeah, you believe Jesus. Not the, not the body, yeah. though. The body you, is just flesh and blood. Yeah, you believe Jesus is God in the flesh. Now, the issue we have with that as Muslims is number one, like I told you, no Jewish person, they read the Torah as well. Mm -hmm. This concept is unheard of of God. Well, the Jews let me just let Jesus. me just let me just finish one thing. Jesus taught the same first commandment as Moses from Deuteronomy that worship your Lord, your God is one God. There's no verse in the Bible where Jesus ever said, I am God, worship me. In fact, even after the crucifixion, I disagree. So which verse says that? Well, I can give you one, I'll give you two. Thomas, when he saw Jesus afterwards, he doubted that Jesus died and rose again. And he had to behold Jesus and touch him and touch even his wounds. Yeah. And when he did, he said, my Lord, my God. Yeah. And then okay, when, so when, let Satan me, let tempted, me... Hold on, when Satan tempted Jesus in the desert, Jesus said very clearly, he said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And not only that... Jesus rose again by the power of God. So he showed us that the power, the manifestation of God was in him bodily. And because of that, the spirit was raised and so was the body. Okay, so you mentioned three things. I'll have to address them all. The first thing you mentioned is about Thomas. Look, if my brother here, Neil, uh, Kyle, I mean, he's a convert to, from Christianity to Islam, okay? okay? So if... You know, if he went through a lot of hardship, for example, God forbid that happens, right. but if he went through a hardship, or let's not use Kyle's example, let's use John, Jonathan. Sure. If he gets into an accident here, Jonathan gets into an accident, and he survives the accident, despite if I was there, I would have died, mm -hmm. I would look at him as well and say, oh my God, oh my Lord. It doesn't mean I'm calling him God or Lord. That was how Thomas reacted, number one. So that's a misquote on your end. Let well, me just well, finish my point. Let me, let me that, just finish right? the point. The way I want to finish this point is, you mentioned that Jesus had, Jesus had wounds after the crucifixion. Even after the crucifixion, they touched him and he said, touch me not. That's because it was still his earthly body. For us, and he said the spirit have no flesh. But if he had actually died, it would have been his spiritual body. It wouldn't have been his body, his well, that's physical why body. We, we, we believe that the tomb was empty, so the body was risen because the body without the spirit is dead. Okay. And so the spirit 
went back into the body so, and resurrected so that this body. This is also your interpretation. It's not said by Jesus. That's this, just the scriptures, yeah, right? The second thing you said was, so you mentioned the Thomas point. Then you said, what was the second point? When Satan was tempting Jesus. Yeah, so this is another point. You said when Satan was tempting Jesus. When you say Satan was tempting Jesus, that already shows us he's not God because the same Bible says God cannot be tempted. Right, so did you hear me a minute ago when I said the flesh and blood was not God because the flesh and blood died and God so this is die. this so is the, where we the flesh say was tempted the temptation so this is this is our problem with as Muslims with Christianity that whenever Jesus for example there was a fig tree and it didn't bear fruit Jesus cursed the tree sure. you know God is all knowing according to the Bible sure, yeah. Jesus didn't know it wasn't the season of fig trees right he, okay he knew Okay, he cursed He's that a tree. Something. So he cursed because that a tree. The Bible says to bear fruit in season and out of season. So you're saying he taught us something. Should, should we curse trees then? No, he's saying that we're a curse if we don't produce fruit in season and out. Yeah, but what's the point of cursing at the tree? Because he's showing the condemnation that will happen to those who don't produce fruit in season and out. Okay, so the point is he didn't have knowledge of the unseen, so he's not well, God. He didn't then. have the knowledge, right? So, so I I, under, I I have some understanding of the Quran, a little bit, not much, just learning as I go. And what I understand is that you guys don't believe in the deity of Jesus just as a prophet, right? And so we believe he was more than a prophet because there must be the shedding of the blood of the Lamb to atone for sin. Okay, we believe right? he was just a prophet right. of. God. Right, aware, and yeah. the reason is because even after the crucifixion when the people discussed the crucifixion they had a discussion I uh, can't remember the exact verse you would probably remember where they said did you hear what happened to the mighty prophet of God and we believe that he Jesus was a prophet. Yes, yeah. yes. so we believe this is where we believe that the Christians have unfortunately took in, taken him to a greater status than he was. For example, when they came to Jesus and said, they said, Oh, good master, why are you so good? He right. said, Don't call me good. Only God is good. No, he so, didn't, hold on, if I may. Yeah. He said, he didn't say, Don't call me good. He said, Why, why do you call me yeah, good? Yeah. None are good but God. So what he's saying is, Are you calling me God? Okay, so and so may I give you a couple other things yeah, why I believe sure, Jesus is sure. God. Uh, Jesus says, "I before Abraham was, I am." So, so Prophet know, Muhammad said the same thing. He said, "Kuntu wa anna Adamu lamun jadilun fi Every prophet is decreed to come by Allah. Yeah. Saying he was before Abraham was, "I am," doesn't make him God. I know the Christians try combining because it. I am means Jehovah. Right? And he's saying, I am Jehovah. So he, and in Revelation, it says that he is the, the true and faithful witness. You don't accept what Paul said at all, by the way. I'm but, talking about John, brother. Yeah. I'm talking about the book of Revelation. And it says that Jesus is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. That he is the one on the throne in heaven. And he is the one who will return. And I know you guys believe he's going to return. No, we right? don't believe he will Some return. Some do, though. Some Muslims do. Mo most Muslims do. But you mentioned the Alpha, Omega verse. Like I said, there's, uh, there's the person I can never pronounce his name it starts with the M he is also called the first and the last so that doesn't make him God this is in the Bible it's a Malachadizic how do you pronounce it do you remember he had no father no nor mother so we believe Melchizedek. yeah Melchizedek the high priest exactly. he was a type and shadow of Jesus to come exactly this but is he wasn't the Alpha and the Omega he's called the first and last no, he's not. The Bible only calls one the first and last. He right? had no mother nor father. Right, but that's right? not saying the first and last. That's if we can no open, we'll check those verses. But my point is that we believe that even Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he's awal and he's akhir. He's the first and the last. That doesn't make someone God. Right, right. Right. This is our point that it's all ambiguous things. Like a Muslim can come right now. He can say that because the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said he's a prophet before Adam he's God we will say no what are you talking about it's the decree of God so our point is there's no verse in the Bible where Jesus says I am God worship me I, I disagree, it's your interpretation disagree, right? just like a Muslim yeah. would possibly disagree with me mm -hmm. and could tomorrow say that you know because the Prophet called himself the first and the last or that he said he was before Adam he's God now we say that for your belief, there has to be explicitness. Yeah, Jesus, we, we take Old Testament and New we Testament. We do as well. And, and we 
we put it all together and the context of that is that Jesus was God revealed in the flesh to die for our sin. So if I can, um, just I'll give you a couple things that I, I struggle with, with the belief of Islam. One is that uh, Muhammad, so he came around 500 years after Jesus, right? And he claimed to get this revelation, at first, uh, if correct me if I'm wrong, but he did question it and think he maybe he was going mad. No, so see, now, now, is that a hadith, no, 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 I'll explain, I'll explain this. Mm -hmm. This is a detailed question, so it might take two, three minutes, so bear with me. The first thing is, when Jesus got revelation, this is in the Bible, you know his siblings and his mother were worried for him, as if he had gone mental. Are you aware of this? Well, I, I, nowhere in the scriptures. This is in Mark somewhere. Right, and it doesn't say that they were, they thought he was mentally oh, it ill. Does. I can show you that that's what's being I hinted to. Okay, so 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 what, day, what were they thinking of when the brothers, when his brothers and sisters and mother were discussing and they wanted to get him treated? What was that about? You say wanting to get him treated. I don't. Uh, there's no passage. Okay, that says I'll, they I'll to show get you treated. that verse. I'll show please you that do, verse. I'll do. add it in the video when yeah, I edit it. Okay. Do, so this is one thing. The second thing is the hadith here speaking of is from Sahih al Bukhari. We accept that hadith. This is one of the quality of the prophets. Whenever God reveals to the prophets of God, their first reaction is that, how could it be me? Why is God choosing me? I'm nobody. This is their humility. So the Prophet Muhammad said, Khashitu Allah nafsi. He felt that I'm, I'm nothing. Right. right? This is his humility. It sure, doesn't sure. mean that he was convinced that it's a satanic inspiration or anything like that. This is why he went to Nofal bin Waraka right. and he says, Hadha namus allavi unzila ala Musa, that this is the same angel that was revealed upon Moses. After that, the Prophet wasallam he preached his message and fulfilled the prophecy of Deuteronomy 18, 18 and John. But if you have one, two more questions, feel free yeah, to ask them. Yeah, a couple comments and then we'll, we'll end it out. Um, the, the Quran says that the book of the Jews is the truth. It's the word of Allah. No, it doesn't say that anywhere. It, it says, say that it's it says, true? Fi wa nur. That means in there is the word of God. It doesn't right. say the whole thing is the word of God. The same Quran tells you, you harifun al kalima an mawadihi, that they take words and put them in other spot and they have written with their own hands and the curse of Allah is on them for writing their own books with their own hands. If you look right. at Luke for example, he says, I wrote this gospel because I was inspired by others. He doesn't say I was inspired by God. This is why there's so yeah, this is why this So this is why there's so much contradiction in the Bible as when Christians have accepted it's number one. If you want to ask one yeah, more if I question. Can just uh, just bring us to an end here. I don't uh, I could I thank you yeah, for yeah. your time by the way. Right. I feel this is how we can reach the truth and I request yeah. you to pray to God yeah, the sure. Father yeah. in the sky in the not sky we don't believe he's limited but he's everywhere yeah, don't, I don't pray to him in the flesh just for this prayer no, we pray to the spirit okay. of God pray pray to God that you know if prophet Muhammad is true then he should guide you and if Jesus is the God and the Savior then he should guide us right, because right. we love Jesus we cannot be Muslims unless we believe in him you know my discrepancy is the fact that the information about Jesus that comes from Muhammad I don't believe to be accurate right? so um, and we don't believe right. the Bible information is accurate for right, example, right. I'll give you one example. The Bible says that once Jesus said, who is my mother? And he disrespected Mother Mary. We don't believe that's that's what he was doing. We yeah. believe that he was saying that those, because he was God in the flesh, so this would make sense, okay. that the true mother uh, and brother or sister would be those who do the will of God. Okay, I understand, but for us as Muslims, that's I, I, a stretch, I, I, I and we believe that was disrespectful to Mother Mary, but we don't believe he said that, because Allah says in the Quran, wa barram bi walidati that he was always respectful to his mother. So this is what the Quran does. Any mistake of the Bible, it corrects. And it tells us that no, Jesus was amazing. He loved his mother. He never disrespected her. This is where we differ with the Christians, which is why we cannot accept the Bible because it says Jesus had prostitutes rubbing his feet. We, we, we don't, we, di we disagree. It we says it in the Bible. The woman was a prostitute, had been had now repented. It doesn't say that in the Bible it says she was because a known she, prostitute. Jesus was telling people to turn from sin, yeah, so she wasn't practicing. We 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 can't we can't accept that a mighty master of God. We believe the Bible has mistakes regarding this. It says in the Bible that he was a people when Jesus came. The Jews said he is a drunkard. Do you believe Jesus drank alcohol? 
No, I don't. So why does the Bible say water that? into wine? But I don't know if he drank or not. The Bible doesn't say that Jesus. So he turned wine. water into wine, let other people drink, but he didn't drink himself. There's a reference in the scriptures at the crucifixion that they offered him a type of wine or or, or, or drink that would numb the pain. I don't believe Jesus was drunkard because the Bible speaks against um, not having a sober mind. It says to be of sober I mind. I agree with you, but did he turn water into wine for others? Yes, he did. And the Bible. This is unacceptable says, to us yeah, yeah, as I Muslims. Yep. Because God, he, he imagine I have poison with me, and I say, you know what, you people don't. I'm not going to drink the poison, but if you guys want to die, go ahead. For me, I can accept that. This is why God in the Quran purifies Jesus, and He says, "Wa min al He was from the close ones to God, and he was not an alcoholic. This was a lie of the Jews because they said a drunkard comes, and a man who eats flat, uh, meat, right? So we don't believe, our belief of Jesus is he's a mighty prophet, uh, but he is, he is sinless. May God clear out the clouds <laughs> so she can see the eclipse. But anyhow, let's right, end. I just want to finish yeah. off here. I want to address your conscience very quickly. We've been talking intellect. Yeah. Um, so have you ever lied, stolen, or looked at a woman? We don't, sh we don't share our sins with others. This is another difference in Islam. Right. Our sins are between us and God. We don't have to profess to the people. This is this makes we, no are, sense. Are you, would you agree that we, that we've all sinned and fallen? I agree. God's I ag I don't believe everyone sinned. Prophet Muhammad was sinless. Jesus all Christ prophets Christ. were sinless. That's right. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam all the way. We believe Jesus prophesied about Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. All prophets are free of sin. No prophet sin. Even some saints didn't sin. There's people in the Bible. Did sin no, he didn't God. ever sin. No. Um. So I I want to stay on your conscience very quickly to. Uh, finish us okay, off here so if we're all sinners we're fasting too so i'm pretty tired okay, okay i hear you um if we're all sinners and i don't believe we're all sinners okay um just maybe not prophets you're saying even saying some saints don't okay. sin well. so in, in my opinion and if you'll be honest just between you and i i'm a i i have sinned before and i am i don't need to hear that, that brother i know you yeah. don't but I'm even mother mary was right. sinless according to us right. well, we, we don't believe that so i'm just going to make a point here uh we've all sinned fallen short of god's glory we're going to stand before god on judgment day he's going to judge us on our sin not on our good deeds but on our sin because a judge looks at your crimes not your good deeds and so we you don't believe in something i'm, I'm aware i'm aware i just want to bring us to an end here brother so um the bible says that the wages of sin is death but that the gift of god is eternal life through christ if someone pays your fine in a court of law the judge can dismiss your case even though you were guilty someone paid your fine the law is satisfied and now the judge can dismiss your case and that's what jesus did for us he was the perfect slain lamb who was slain for the sin of the world that through him if we trust and obey him that means turn from sin and live a holy life according to his word that we will have everlasting life okay so we don't believe any of that neither did jesus i i, I disagree but we <laughs> yeah, got so we, jesus we, we, never said let me just end on this that in islam and the old testament and new testament everyone dies for their own sins jesus never came to teach us that look i'm dying for everyone's sins well, he never said taught he this bruised for our iniquities and by his stripes we are healed yeah and because he died and rose again that we can have the reconciliation to come to God and know Him as a Father. Do you know God, Allah as a Father or just God? I believe that Allah loves us more than 70 mothers. So we believe He's far above. If you look at... you go at, to Him as a Father and say Father? You know? I don't need to call Him Father. But I don't disagree that other prophets may have used this term yeah. in the metaphorical sense. But one thing I want to tell you for certain is that according to Islam, everyone dies for their own sins and you will be judged for your own sins but Allah says in the Quran that his mercy encompasses everything so he looks at your good deeds there's stories of people who have killed hundreds of people and then they turn to God last second and God entered them into paradise but our belief is that Jesus has never taught what you're teaching today that I am here ready to die for your sins the prophecies of Isaiah that you're mentioning no Jew took it the way you're taking, nor did Jesus believe it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. God bless you. And uh, God bless you all. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for having uh, us. I'm going to put this on my YouTube. You can check it out.